That is going to play very well in a bear market because they... All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I am Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I'm going to do a video that's a little bit different. I want to talk about the potential for a crypto winner and what it means for the Bitcoin miners and who is most likely to survive in that scenario. So we're going to talk about what does it take to survive a crypto winter. So we talk about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners all the time on this channel. So if that's content you're interested in, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you're watching this, there's more than a 50% chance that you have not done that because more than half of our viewers are not subscribed. So we really would appreciate it. Also, please smash the like button. It helps the channel out a lot. Lastly, we have a link in the pinned comment to our free Discord. So we mostly talk about Bitcoin miners over there and Bitcoin, but we also talk about a lot of other high growth stocks and, and really everything investing. So you're welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. Okay, I want to talk about what it takes to survive a crypto winter. And, I, and I'm doing this video because I've had an overwhelming number of requests to to talk about this who's going to survive everybody's very worried about their investments right now and i understand that and it makes sense the bitcoin mining stocks have been absolutely decimated and ironically i happen to be making this video on a day where we're having a little bit of a bounce so it's a mostly green day however we have had red day after red day all these bitcoin mining stocks are at or near their all-time lows so stock prices being down the way they are changes the dynamic of a company's ability to raise capital and to survive on a going forward basis. So I wanna talk about what are the most important factors for these Bitcoin miners in order for them to survive a potential crypto winter or a bear market or whatever you wanna call it. And what I'm really talking about is not a flash crash down to 20 with a quick recovery back up to 28 or 30,000. I'm talking about some extended period of time where Bitcoin is down from where it is right now, you know, down near 20,000 or 15,000 and not for two weeks or a month, but for six months or a year or a year and a half, one of the old school crypto winters that we were having in previous cycles. I will tell you, I personally am not expecting that at all. I do not believe that's what's going to happen, but we can't be sure. Bitcoin has gone down quite a bit. It has stayed down here in this twenty-eight or $29,000 area for quite some time now. So I'm going to go through what I think these companies need to do to survive. For some of them, some of these variables are already set in stone and it's probably too late. For others, if they do the right thing they can get through a crypto winter some of them can easily get through a crypto winter so i'm not going to go through the ups and downs and who's green and who's red i just want to show you there's 20 miners right now that i have that i follow if you look at their prices they are down so much bit farms at a dollar 72 hut 8 is at two dollars and 28 cents what happens when your stock price gets that low and your market cap gets that low the prospect of getting a considerable amount of money through an equity and at the market offering or a private offering that goes down drastically your dilution goes way up at this price and more importantly you just don't get nearly as much cash so this is an equation that a lot of these companies have survived on over the last few years and in a crypto winter that is the number one thing that option is going to be off the table so there's three potential options for cash flow gross profit from operations now in a bitcoin winter your gross profit is probably either going to be low or non-existent it may be negative for some of these companies companies. The second one would be raising cash through equity. That possibility comes off the table. The last way you can raise money is through debt. So in a bear market, that may be one of the scenarios that gets some of these companies from this side to the other side. I'm going to give you my list and what I think is in order of importance. Number one, management. If we move into a bear market, if we move into a crypto winter, management is going to have to make some major decisions and they're going to have to be nimble and move on their feet because the plans that all these companies have were basically bull market plans. If you remember last year, people were buying machines at any price and ordering them out, you know, a year or years in advance. Those plans are not good for a bear market. So management is going to have to make some decisions and they're going to have to do it in a timely manner and they're going to have to balance the situation properly. So first of all, those companies that have balanced what they've done in the past are more likely to survive, right? The companies that haven't gotten super overly aggressive are in a much better position to weather the storm if we go through a crypto winter. The companies that have gone all in and you know weren't even mining Bitcoin at the beginning of the year and they hope to be at 15 exahash at the end of the year, most of those companies are going to fall short because they just simply don't have the infrastructure, they don't have the cash required, and at this point, now that their stock has been decimated, they're not going to be able to execute those plans. So, so what management has done up to date, and then more importantly, what management does going forward, I think is the 
number one factor on whether or not your Bitcoin miner makes it through a crypto winter should we have one. The number two most important thing when I'm measuring whether or not one of these companies can survive a crypto winter is debt. Do they have a lot of debt on their balance sheet? So this was not a big deal in a bull market. In a bull market, a lot of shareholders I know really were urging companies to either spend their Bitcoin or to acquire debt instead of continuing to raise equity and dilute the shareholders. The problem is now, if you spent the last year accumulating debt and you have a lot of debt and now we're moving into a crypto winner, this debt is short-term debt typically. When you borrow money against Bitcoin equipment, it's, it's typically about a two-year loan. So that means if you've already borrowed your money and you have a lot of debt, you're going to spend the next two years having that debt come due. So instead of being able to get money, you're going to have to give away all your money for the debt that you accumulated. Amount of debt and managing debt is going to be key. The number three thing I think is the most important is what are your current assets? What are your liquid assets? Cash, cash equivalents, even cryptocurrencies. So, you know, some of these companies have an awful lot of Bitcoin on their balance sheet, even at Bitcoin 15,000. That still represents a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars for a lot of these companies. So obviously you don't want to have to give away all of your Bitcoin in a bear market. So that's why it would preferably be through cash and cash equivalents if you have that versus your current liabilities plus any debt that you've acquired. Because again, that debt's going to be coming due. So related to that, what are your tangible assets that are unencumbered? So what I mean by that is property and equipment. If you have property and you have equipment on that property and you have facilities set up to mine Bitcoin and they are unencumbered, meaning you have not borrowed anything against them at all. You know, some of these companies have very large numbers, a quarter of a billion, a half a billion, more than half a billion in some instances of unencumbered equipment. So while you're not going to get necessarily the best rate, if you do have a half a billion dollars of unencumbered assets, there is an ability to raise some amount of debt in order to get you through the bear market. And again, this is all about cash flow. So all of these things relate to cash flow. To get from one end to the other, the bottom line is you cannot run out of cash. If you run out of cash and your ability to generate cash, then you're done. So that's what I'm looking at. So for those companies that have a massive amount of equipment and they never borrowed any money on that, that is going to play very well in a bear market because they will be able to borrow some amount. Now, again, it's not going to be nearly as much as it would have been in a bull market, but most of these companies don't need mass quantities of cash. They just need enough cash to get through the cycle. My number five thing that I think a company needs is to manage their overhead. So all of these companies have a different level of overhead versus the amount of of revenue they have. The higher percentage that is, the more cash flow you are going to require. So for those companies that have high overhead, they are going to have to act quickly and try and see whatever they can do to change that equation and reduce their overhead. Okay, so the sixth thing is mining gross profit. And, and I think most people would probably think that's the first thing on the list. And, and in my opinion, it's not. We just talked about some other things that I think are much more important in bridging the gap to get from here to there. And the reason that I say that is in a crypto winner, you're probably not going to be generating much gross profit profit, you may be generating negative gross profit. If you are, that amount is going to get added to your overhead as costs that you're going to have to cover to get through a crypto winner. And it's not really realistic for these companies to say, well, we'll just shut everything down because you've got all that equipment. You've got all these facilities. There's costs associated with that, even if you're not running the machine. So for the most part, unless Bitcoin gets to some incredibly low number, it will likely make sense for all these companies to continue to mine Bitcoin with their new Bitcoin mining machines. So that's the other thing. Some of their older machines will become obsolete much faster based on efficiency. Next on my list is diversity of revenue. There are some of these Bitcoin mining companies that have diversity of revenue. And so if you're getting revenue from other places other than directly mining Bitcoin, those things may be more sustainable while Bitcoin is in a bear market if that happens. So if you're generating cash through a different line of revenue, through a different segment of your business, then that can help support the Bitcoin mining business through a bear market. So, so that's another potential source of cash. So you can see these are a massive amount of variables and there are more variables past that Obviously, the price to which Bitcoin goes to is a major variable. Some companies live and survive just fine at 22. Those same companies may be in big trouble at 15,000. And another major variable that's totally outside of their control is what is the global hash rate? Right now, the global hash rate is over 200 exahash. In a Bitcoin bear market, what would make sense is that that number would reduce. But if it does not reduce, if the difficulty level stays extremely high, then that's going to affect their gross margin. However, 
if the people with older machines and less efficient equipment and higher costs of energy have to bail out and leave the network, then the difficulty rate will go down and a company's potential gross profit or break even point from a cash basis just on electricity, that will change and improve. So, you know, that's a great unknown. We don't know what the network itself is going to look like in that scenario. So there are so many massive, massive variables. It's very hard to rank and say definitively, this company is going to survive, that companies go out of business. Using these parameters, I'm going to try and sort through and put these companies in, in different buckets. Some that I think have a good chance to survive, but with some risk and some that I think need a lot of help and may not survive. So there's all three of those scenarios that exist inside of a bear market. I am going to give one spoiler alert away. And again, I'm going to go through the rest of these companies and I will do future videos talking about this and trying to categorize each Bitcoin miner as to what its potential is to make it through a bear market. And this doesn't mean they are the number one. Hut 8 is very near the top of my list. Now, there's different lists. That doesn't mean I'm going to go invest everything into Hut 8 because a bear market is only one of the possible scenarios. But you do want to make sure that your Bitcoin miner is going to be able to survive in good times, in bad times, bull markets, bear markets, crypto winners. So I like to run through all of these scenarios. It is a bit overwhelming, I will be honest, but I'm going to try to get this information out. And what I strive to do is at least maybe make a list of those companies I think are most likely to survive. And then maybe another list of those companies that I think are least likely to survive. So again, none of this is financial advice. You can see there's a massive amount of moving parts and a monumental amount of variables, some of which are totally outside everybody's control and, and really impossible to predict. But I'm going to do my best guess to talk about probabilities and see where these companies lie. So, so stay tuned for some more videos regarding this and drop me a comment below if you have anything in specific you'd like me to look at or any other major variables that you think exist that I may have missed on my list. If you made it this far, please remember to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.